We have breaking Taylor Swift news today. Do Taylor do do Swift do 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 do. is she's an auteur, Taylor Swift. She but, is. But first, we've got breaking Alonzo Duvaldi news too, <laughs> and that is that you have a new book that was just announced this week. Yes, yes, uh, I am writing a book for Running Press uh, that's going to be part of their TCM line, uh, and it's called Hollywood Pride. It is about the history of. Um, uh, LGBTQ uh, Hollywood on both sides of the screen or both sides of the lens. Um, and it is coming out in May of 2024 in time for pride 24 celebrations. So uh, yeah, it's a bit down the road, but they just announced it. So I can now tell people and I'm very excited. It's going to be great and uh, daunting, but I look forward to taking it on. It's going to be great. You are the expert. You are the guy to do this. So I'm a guy to do this. Let's, you know, <laughs> let's be clear. There's a lot of very talented folks out there, but I, I'm very excited about this project. Well, okay. Undoubtedly, though, what you are the guy for is Christmas movies. I'll take that one. <laughs> and that is why we are doing a live stream next Monday, yes. December 12th at noon Pacific time. 12, Come 12 join to 12. Us. Yeah, it's true. Come join us here. And um, Alonzo will talk about his favorite Christmas movies. If he can whittle it down, I, it's, a, again, a daunting topic. And we'd love to hear what you guys watch every year or what you've watched this year that perhaps you've enjoyed. So please come yeah. join us. I want to hear uh, we'll about yours, a, too. I don't know that I have that many. We'll see. We'll <laughs> Not come like out you the chat. do. No. Eyes Wide Shut is a Christmas movie. It is. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we have a link down below to that if you want to be notified about our live discussion next week. So please come and join us. Yes, we have breaking Taylor Swift news. She is going to direct her first feature film. She's directed several music videos. And so she has written and directed a feature, or she is writing right. a feature for Searchlight. They just announced yeah. this today. More power to her. I think there are folks who are always kind of looking for the next mountain to climb, you know. And so now that she's, she seems to have this music thing pretty well in order. <laughs> I guess now she's looking to, you know, expand into the cinema. And uh, yeah, she's, I mean, this is not something where like they're gonna, just going to sort of plop her on a set with a really, you know, experienced cinematographer and pretend like she's running the show, like she's writing this thing too. So this is absolutely going to be like her baby. I'm very curious to see what it looks like. Same, because her songwriting is so vivid, mm. right? She's such a great storyteller. So I would assume that any thing that she feels compelled to write a whole feature film about right. will be rich and vivid. And so yeah. I, I also look forward to um, the, the Taylor Swift cinema experience <laughs> speaking of the cinema afi today the american yes. film institute announced their top 10 list it's kind of usual suspects of things that we have been seeing and will continue to see throughout award season their top 10 films of the year are avatar elvis everything everywhere the fablemans nope she said tar top gun maverick the woman king and women talking, but then yes. they gave a special award to the Banshees of Inisherin. Oh, I missed that part. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, the... it's, it's not an American film, right? So oh, right. don't yes. they need to be American films? I Although guess. James Cameron's Canadian. Well, so is Sarah Polly. So, uh, you know, but yeah, this is a pretty safe list. AFI is not out to, you know, get themselves on Sean Hannity the way that uh, Manola Dargis did by actually talking about movies that, that she liked this year that, you know, some people didn't know what they were. And so that meant there was a woke left antics. But uh, right. we're elitists yeah. for liking movies about donkeys. Exactly. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> we saw more movies than you. It's our job. You know, uh, but yeah, it's, it's it's pretty safe. It's pretty middle brow. And uh, I, I'm sure a lot of those movies will be in the Oscar conversation. It's a it's a similar um, aesthetic. For sure. And then uh, there's a big shakeup that is going on, about to go on with James Gunn's purview of DC yeah. Studios. And this kind of got leaked out. There was a Hollywood Reporter story about how Wonder Woman 3 is now not going to happen. And other movies that there were like surefire sequels in, in the works for are perhaps not happening as he and his partner in running DC Studios are like, Presenting their stuff to David Zasloff. Zasloff? Zasloff, yes. yeah. And uh, then he responded to that on Twitter saying, some of this is true, but some of it's not. Some of it, we don't know whether it's true or not yet. Sure. 
And then the rap had an exclusive where the, basically the story came out that it was Patty Jenkins who pulled the plug on Wonder Woman three, because apparently there was a meeting where she had to send somebody the definition of what a character arc was. So take that for what it's worth. But apparently she, they, the, she had a, a, a whole pitch and they did not respond to it. And they kind of wanted to say, they were like, they were very, what else you got? And she was like, well, if you don't want to do this, I don't want to do Wonder Woman three. So that's kind of where we are with that right now. I mean, yeah, like obviously if they're hiring James Gunn and this other dude to come run the show, it's, it's it, it, not everything is going to be business as usual. They're going to be like, all right, let's take a look at this. Let's set out what our grand plans are going to be. And maybe these things will work and maybe they won't. And obviously like, it's not like they came in and unplugged Joker to heaven knows no one's going to, was going to do that, you know, with a flash. It's yeah. coming out this year, whether you want yeah, to or not. Apparently, or next year. I guess, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so so they're 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 looking to like play a long game here, I think. And so yeah, some that that's going to be some shake up, and we'll see what happens. Speaking of rabid fandoms, hmm. apparently everything, everywhere, all at once has inspired <sighs> some intense feelings, which is really interesting, you know, because it's you would think not a movie that is like mainstream enough for everybody because it's so weird and so singular and so challenging, but the folks who love it feel very strongly about it and are getting kind of bullying. You'd be shocked to learn on Twitter and mm-hmm. elsewhere. And our friend, regarding, Kwan, was yeah, that? Sorry, sorry, regarding among others, Manola's list on New York times, which did not include it. Yeah. So some people didn't put it on their top 10 list. I enjoy a lot about it. It will probably not be on my top 10 list. It might be on your top 10 list. Who knows? But like, it's a personal thing. Yeah. And it's not an attack if we didn't choose all things that you like. Uh, that's part of the fun of it, right? Exactly. We're all different. <laughs> but uh, I guess some fans are so intense about this movie that like there, there's some online bullying going on. So Daniel Kwan, a lovely gentleman, one of yes. the two Daniels who mm-hmm. directed the movie stepped in and did a whole thread on Twitter. Do you want to describe what he said? Yeah. He basically was like, uh, knock it off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and also the, 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 I, basically the idea of the way that people were being so like harsh and obnoxious about this goes against the very spirit of the film. Mm-hmm. So like, if you are a fan of everything, everywhere, all at once, I certainly am. Mm-hmm. Um, then one of the things you, maybe you should have taken away from the movie is that this is not the kind of behavior that the film is endorsing. Um, people need to just calm down about lists. Like they're dumb. They don't mean anything. <laughs> if it's sight and sound, it's a consensus of people. And 10 years from now, they're going to do it again. And it'll be different people and a different consensus. And it doesn't mean that all the movies you love are being thrown into a lava pit. Like it just means that other <laughs> critics had other thoughts and individual top 10 lists are that individual's top 10 list. Write your own, put it on Twitter. Yeah. Why not? Like it doesn't, none of this matters. This is, these are opinions about art and we all are allowed to have them and other people's don't threaten you in any way and if other people like movies you haven't heard of rather than get angry and feel like they're trying to make you feel stupid why don't i go hmm maybe i should check out that movie maybe you'll like it maybe you won't it doesn't matter but let people have opinions about things for christ's sake well, I think increasingly folks would like critics to validate what their own experience was, or at least what their expectations will be of their experience. And so let's say, hmm, you're excited about The Dark Knight Rises. And you see your <laughs> For review, instance. Hypothetically. And you see a review that is perhaps not as glowing as you would have hoped, like that in no way affects your own experience. You're going to see it, probably like it, and you'll probably go on with the rest of your day and be happy. So yes, I'm not, I'll never understand that part of it. <laughs> just because just because you and I figured out a way to get paid for this, it doesn't mean that our opinion ha- carries any more weight or means something that yours doesn't, you know? So it's like, just, I, it, it's, it, 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 it's infuriating. <laughs> I appreciate Daniel Kwan trying to inject some reason yes. into the whole discussion, though. Uh, good for him. Absolutely. Uh, the Sundance lineup was announced. The first Sundance Film Festival in person since 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, among the many, many movies are uh, Nicole Hall of Center film Yay. and a documentary about Michael J. Fox. Mm. Uh, are you going to Sundance? Uh, I am covering it virtually this year. So okay. there's a lot of their uh, titles that will be, uh, as in the past several years, will be you know made available you know to to press via you know links and uh their app and whatnot so i'm covering it that way i'll be seeing some stuff but i i'm not going to be in park city now 
Right. I know. So if you guys are going to be there, if you're going to watch it virtually, because there is that option as well, let us know. Let us know what mm. you're looking forward to. Forgot to mention in our little award section earlier, Top Gun Maverick is the National Board of Review's choice for the best film of the year. Yes. It's also worth mentioning the National Board of Review is not a critics group. They're not. They're like scholars. Fans? I don't know. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a membership <laughs> organization that you can pay to belong to, but they're not film critics. And there's only like a few dozen of them. It's about the same size membership as the HFPA, correct? Oh, I, you know, I honestly don't know. I don't. There's a lot that I don't know about yeah. the 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 inner workings. I just do know that it's not a critics group, but because it has the word review in the title, people mm. tend to think that it is. We have some sad news about Celine Dion. Mm, yes, do you see this? That I she did. she already had to postpone her tour once, and now she has again because she has this rare neurological disorder. Yeah. Uh, that basically will will inhibit her ability to move and eventually to speak, um, which is heartbreaking. Tragic. Absolutely. So uh, thinking of you, Celine Dion, get well. Yeah. 